Last year, I showed you my morning routine, explaining why I wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning and what I do in the morning to get ready for work by 8 and also for the whole day really. In order to wake up at 5 in the morning, there are a few things that I need to do the night before to ensure that I am able to wake up that early and also to make sure that I am in a steady mindset the rest of the day. I'm no longer the night owl that I used to be while I was at uni many many moons ago. Pulling an all-nighter was so normal for me and the next day after finishing off the assignment overnight, I would actually go into lecture I would be able to stay awake and stay alive the entire day too. Sleep was for the week and it was optional. I'm no longer like that at all. If I haven't had enough sleep at night, I wouldn't want to be with myself the next day. Today I want to talk to you about my nighttime routine. I found myself sleeping later and later into the night and waking up much later in the morning or just being plain grumpy. I recently realized that I've also got insomnia where it takes me such a long time to fall asleep at night or I wake up within a couple of hours and then I struggle through the rest of the day. I just got fed up with this and I realized I had to do something. So I made some changes to my nighttime routine and this seems to be work really well. The usual suspects are always electronic devices or when my mind becomes extra active. I'm always staring at my phone or my laptop on my computer throughout the day and even late into the night. It usually isn't anything important at all, it's just probably scrolling on Instagram or just browsing some random things and those were the culprits that contributed to my sleepless nights. The first thing I did was to set a bedtime on my iPhone. I've been using iPhone for donkey's years now and I've seen this app before but I just never used it at all. It's a regular clock app that you have on your iPhone, it comes standard with any iPhone and you've got this option to set a bedtime. First and foremost, you need to decide how long a sleep you need. I figured I need about 7-8 to eight hours. 8 hours is a bit of an overkill but still maybe seven and a half hours or so. So I decided that I wanted to wake up at half five in the morning. I set my sleep time from half nine to half five. Once you select your sleep time, the app will then prompt you to ask if you want a reminder ahead of time before your sleep time so you can close up everything that you're doing before that and get ready for bed in time. You can also choose to set your phone to go into a do not disturb mode while it's bedtime. This will stop any notifications or calls from coming through and you can unblock certain numbers for emergency purposes. Other than that, you don't get disturbed by any vibrating or beeping from your phone when you receive a WhatsApp message from you know, different time zones or anything like that. If you're one of my friends in a different time zone and you've been messaging me late at night and I haven't been responding to you, you know this is why. I then made a plan to stop using my computer by half seven or eight in the evening at the absolute latest. I typically spend about eight to nine hours a day staring at a computer screen for work. And then after five in the evening, I spend more time using my laptop or my MacBook just to do my own personal development or you know hobbies and things like that. Um, I normally start editing in the evening or maybe the weekend sometimes but usually in the evening. My mind becomes super active every time I'm editing a video or a photo and it just takes such a long time because I cannot stop until I finish what I'm doing. So definitely no editing late into the night. I was going to reserve all of those for the weekend or I just have to stop by 8 o'clock at the absolute latest. At around 8 p.m. I would wash my face and do my usual skincare routine at night. If I haven't hit my daily steps target for that day, I would set a 15 minute timer on my watch and then I'll be walking around the house. Sometimes I will be talking over the phone or I might be listening to something while I'm walking. Multitasking you see. By 8.30 I get into bed. I set my water bottle on my bedside table and then I start journaling on my phone. I know I set no electronic devices after 8 o'clock but this is a short journal and also I've set my phone to nighttime mode after 8 o'clock so the brightness is not going to awaken me or awaken my mind. I've always wanted to do daily journaling for quite some time now but I never really found a proper method so it never stuck to me and I never committed to it. But recently I had set up several templates on Notion and daily journaling was one of it. It makes it so much more easier to do it on my phone. Um, you might have heard of people talk about brain dump first thing in the morning. I choose to do it at night. 
So I kind of write anything I want to. I have a time limit for it though. It's just about 10 to 15 minutes, not longer than that. And I randomly fill in things according to my template. I don't care about sentence constructions. I don't care about forming, you know, like an intro, a body and a conclusion and all of those stuff at all. It's just a brain dump for me at the end of the day. That's all it is. Once I've done my journaling, I set my phone on my bedside table and I pick up a book that I've got there as well. I've always wanted to pick up reading once again. When I was much younger, I used to read a lot. But in the last couple of years, that took a back seat. Every time I think that I want to read more, I never really consciously made a plan to do it. Um, at the beginning of January, I made an effort to stop using social media and started reading books instead of, you know, using that time for scrolling online and things like that. And that kind of stuck on me. So this has now become my allocated reading time um, just before bed for at least an hour. And I find that when I'm reading before bed, it kind of relaxes my mind and it sets a mood for me to be able to sleep. I don't strictly put my book away at half nine and fall asleep immediately. Sometimes I read for slightly longer and sometimes even when I get into bed and switch off all of the lights, I still need a little bit more help to fall asleep. During nights like these, I play some songs on Alexa. I just get Alexa to play songs from Spotify. Um, maybe it's one or two particular songs or sometimes it's just the entire playlist that plays in the background throughout the night. This is my nighttime routine. I would say that it has been quite effective for me ever since I started following it, but that's not to say that this is my permanent solution. I know that it's definitely going to change in the next couple of months. These morning and nighttime routines are not permanent at all. It keeps changing as and when you need to according to the different seasons of life that you are in at that moment. With so much influence and distractions around us, it takes a lot of effort to be conscious about your health and about your mental health also. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you found it useful too. If you have any specific nighttime routine, be sure to share it with me in the comments below. And if you're planning on implementing anything that I've shared with you today, let me know about it too. I'd be interested to know. Stay healthy and remember to always prioritize your mental health. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!